on the sixth day, man was created. From that point on, humanity has always strived to create new equipment, develop technology, and to create solutions to shortcomings or to accomplish a certain task. The tank is no different. Unlike what people believe about that one follow-up quote, war does change. The tank is no different. After about 100 years of tank development out of the way, you may ask yourself, what specifically is a tank? Or rather, you're concerned about one particular tank subclass. Here at the Think Bunker, we try to answer questions to the best of our known accuracy. As such, we will now answer the question for you, what is a tank? Now, before I get into the specifics of what a tank is, or rather their specializations and their subclasses, I have a question for you. Is this a tank? Is this a tank? And is this a tank? If you answered yes to any of these examples, either because you have an understanding of armored vehicles and their subclasses and specializations, or you just look at these vehicles and say, these are tanks, you would be correct. The term tank does not define a single specific configuration of vehicles, rather it's a broader term that describes a vast build of vehicles. The criteria for a tank are few, but specific. These are, must be armed, must be armored, must be fully tracked, and must be built for general combat in mind. With that said, there are two types of armored vehicles that you would think, and you would be forgiven as such for thinking these would be tanks, however they are excluded due to their mode of transportation. The excluded vehicles include half-tracks, and armored cars. Each vehicle is excluded because in some capacity, both vehicles rely on wheels as their primary mode of transportation. Another vehicle that is excluded from the category of tank that you would think may qualify as a tank are anti-air vehicles. Although they may be armed and armored, fully tracked as well sometimes, they are only meant to fight one particular enemy. What this means is that anti-air vehicles are, well, just that, meant to fight air threats only. Now, this doesn't mean you can't engage other forms of enemy forces. It's just not advised. Now with those out of the way, we will introduce you to the three most common tank types. First, the light. Second, the heavy. And third, the medium. Per our stated order, we start off with the light. As the name implies, light tanks are the lightest forms of tanks you'll see in general combat. Light tanks trade their armor for speed. This allows them to gain a secondary layer of effective armor. This makes a modicum of sense, as if the enemy cannot hit you, they cannot kill you. Now with that in mind, the trade-offs mentioned earlier can lend themselves useful for other combat roles.
escorting light convoys and providing support to the infantry. Also performing battlefield reconnaissance in order to make allies aware of emerging enemy threats. Achtung, war uns hier und die Feinde nehmen. Be advised, there's a Mark IV Panzer on your 8 o'clock. Okay, understood. Wir haben den Mark Vier verloren. Dort ab in Grad. Beseitigen Sie den Schädling. Bear in mind that while performing battlefield reconnaissance, enemy forces may have their eyes on you. Therefore, it is not wise to stay in one place for too long. Light tanks also could serve as exploitation vehicles. When friendly forces broke through an enemy line, the exploitation tanks will be sent in to cause chaos behind enemy lines. Terrain can be both a detriment and a benefit. The beneficial aspect of terrain is that it creates a visual barrier in between you and your enemy. This can allow you to sneak behind or through enemy lines. The detrimental aspect of terrain is that when firing in an open field moving across said field, you may find yourself in the unfortunate situation that you run into a solid object. As mentioned earlier, your speed allows you to dodge incoming enemy fire. If you experience a sudden loss of that secondary layer of armor, that never forebodes well. Moving on, the next tank in our list will be the Heavy. As the name implies, Heavy tanks are, well, just that heavy, meaning that speed is not their strong suit. This, typically, is usually made up for in their other aspects, armor and firepower. Depressingly, those were supposed to be the benefits. In exchange for those supposed benefits, you are left with a vehicle who bogged up supply lines, more expensive to produce, became a constant target for enemy fire, less reliable in automotive functions, harder to transport, and harder to recover being only a few factors. This factor is only made worse considering the amount of teething issues unique to each vehicle. The worst part being that by the time the teething issues for the heavy tanks had been fixed, Medium tanks would then receive upgrade packages that would increase the values of their guns and armor, allowing them to perform on par or slightly below the effectiveness of a heavy tank. Even then, this would not stop militaries from designing new medium tank concepts that could do the job of the currently in-service heavy tank at a lower weight. Even with these disadvantages in mind, militaries across the world found a favor in heavy tanks for their notable advantages. For one, they could take a hit, and they could give one in return. Now, don't go getting the idea that you're invulnerable, as just because you have thicker armor doesn't mean that there isn't something out there that can penetrate it.
The same thing applies to your gun. You can't penetrate all armor. As stated earlier, heavy tanks can't maneuver as well as any other class of tank. As such, situational awareness is key. It is much harder for a heavy tank to react to a flanking enemy than it is for a light or medium tank. Any tank can kill any other tank on any given day is a true statement. However, the heavy tank has one hard counter. The Tank Destroyer. Although Tank Destroyers can kill any other tank, they are specialized to kill heavy tanks. We'll end the heavy tank segment with the subclass, the Assault Tank. Simply put, these focus on armor above their firepower. In fact, most Assault Tanks specifically do not have very powerful guns oftentimes supporting cannons that the average medium tank had access to. Essentially what this boils down to is that this is the main purpose of the assault tank. Take hits and break through a line. Now we have just talked about the heavy tanks and the light tanks we have talked about previously. This will now lead us into the medium tank. In comparison to most, Medium tanks are the most generalized of the general combat tanks. While heavy tanks are somewhat effective at a specific type of combat and light tanks are made for specific combat tasks, mediums were made for everything else. The word versatility cannot even do the class of the medium tanks justice. Although being overshadowed by that of the heavy tank, Medium tank would forge the backbones of every armored force in the world. Even then, that still does not do the legacy, the true legacy of the medium tank justice. Medium tanks as a concept with realistic expectations would evolve. Their capabilities would follow suit. For the perceived advantages of the heavy, the death of said heavy tank can be laid solely on the blade of the medium. This is due to the fact that the mediums could do anything the heavy could do, while being faster, smaller, and cheaper. The versatility aspect of the medium tank was so desirable that the Universal and the main battle tank series were created from the medium tank. Now, we move on to the tank destroyer. Tank destroyers come in two forms, turreted or casemates, with casemates being the far more popular option. Most tank destroyers were actually built off the pre-existing chassis of a medium or heavy tank, most of the time medium. This was a preemptive measure to ensure the success of your tanks in the field. Although towed guns did exist, the vulnerability of the crews operating said gun was very high. With that said, when you need this gun the most, it's the most vulnerable. With the tank destroyer, you're now able to bring your gun up to the front and still have it maneuver comfortably on the battlefield. Moving on, we will proceed to the tank destroyer subclass. The assault gun. Assault guns are built like tank destroyers, however they have the armament of a medium tank. Assault guns are built to function as turretless medium tanks. This is a good option for a nation that needs to be more conservative with its resources. Now you can build a medium tank that does not have a turret, but it's cheaper, and it can either provide the forces in the area the same support of a medium tank, although being less situationally aware, or supplement already existing forces. Next up on our list, the mobile artillery guns. As the name suggests, mobile artillery guns offset the issues faced by typical artillery batteries. That issue being logistical in nature, as artillery batteries simply cannot just disassemble, move, unpack, assemble, and then range in a target within an adequate amount of time on the constantly moving battlefield. 
When the enemy is pushed out of the range of your artillery batteries, your friendly forces are without support until they can get set up again. This now means friendly forces have to push into enemy territory without artillery support or your offensive has to stop, giving the enemy much needed breathing room. With the mobile artillery vehicle at your disposal, you can push into enemy territory with limited artillery support. Regarding this next vehicle, the status of a tank versus not a tank is a bit more controversial with this one. The Infantry Fighting Vehicle, or the IFV, gets its origins from the Armored Personnel Carrier, or the APC, of whom was developed from the armored troop transporting half-tracks, most famously the American M3 and the German SDKFZ-251. APCs were commonly fully enclosed to protect the infantry inside and fully tracked to give better terrain navigation than that of the half-tracks previously. However, this alone does not make the APC a tank, as it was typically only armed with machine guns. The question was then proposed, what happens when you fit an APC with a turret armed with an auto cannon for dealing with trucks and infantry, and an anti-tank guided missile launcher. This thinking led to the birth of the IFV. One may ask, if the IFV is just an advanced APC, then what makes the IFV a tank but the APC not one? The role of the APC was to provide a way for the infantry to reach the front lines, but after that, not much else. IFVs, on the other hand, followed the same principle, however, after disembarking the infantry, It'll provide said infantry with what is effectively a light tank to dispose of both infantry and armored threats. Although a closely related subclass cousin to the APC, the IFV meets all the requirements. Thank you to all of you who watched the video. Although a bit later than we intended, regardless, here we are. Be sure to check out our previous video on the evolution of combat arms. On top of that, we have plenty of other content available on our channel, so please do go check that out as well. Finally, I'd like to thank the crew here at the Think Bunker, as well as the Hungarian and his European friends for helping me with the footage for this video. His channel will be linked below, so please, do go check him out. With that said, this has been Painful Existence with the Think Bunker. Thank you for watching. Now get back to work.